Zollinger-Ellison syndrome is the name of a cluster of symptoms caused by gastronomas, one of six neuroendocrine tumors associated with the GI tract that you might see on step one. None of these tumors is super high yield, but they're all fair game, and there's a lot of similarities that make them pretty easy to memorize. Just a brief review. A neuroendocrine tumor is a tumor based on a cell line that secretes hormones in response to nervous system stimulation. And this type of cell is actually pretty common in the GI tract, as the enteric nervous system coordinates extensively with the endocrine system to digest your meals. Most of these tumors are found primarily in the pancreas, the one exception being carcinoid tumors, which are found primarily in the small intestine. And while these tend to be slow growing, all of these do have the potential to become malignant. So surgery is the definitive treatment for all these tumors, but they're not always resectable at the time of diagnosis. What's kind of cool and unique is the fact that all of these tumors respond to octreotide, which is basically the commercial preparation of the hormone somatostatin. Now, in the endocrine section, we discuss somatostatin primarily in the context of regulating growth hormone, but in the GI tract, somatostatin has another function. It pretty much acts as a global endocrine suppressant of all GI hormones, so as you can see, it works pretty well to suppress all of these tumors. So let's talk specifically about gastronomas. By the way, I'm going to refer to it as gastronoma from here on out, not Renee Zellweger syndrome or whatever it's called. I hate eponyms. So to understand the syndrome caused by gastronomas, you have to understand what gastrin does. It's a GI hormone that's primarily responsible for increasing the synthesis of stomach acid, and I'm sure you can see why too much of this stuff definitely is not a good thing. Can you think of certain symptoms? Ulcers is definitely a good answer. In fact, this syndrome causes some of the most heinous ulcers you've ever seen in your life, all the way down to the jejunum. If you see the word jejunal ulcer on the test, that's actually incredibly uncommon in peptic ulcer disease, and finding an ulcer as far down as the jejunum is extremely suggestive of Zollinger-Ellison syndrome, because pretty much nothing else causes that quantity of acid secretion. If you're scoping the patient, you might also notice hypertrophy of the stomach's rugae, because gastrin causes proliferation of the cells in the stomach. Finally, the duodenum gets so acidic that it literally inactivates pancreatic enzymes, and this leads to severe diarrhea and malabsorption. Now, the test for gastronomes is pretty weird. It's called the secretin simulation test. Now, those of you budding gastroenterologists may be thinking to yourself, but wait, Arjun, doesn't secretin inhibit gastrin? Well, that's usually correct. If gastrin is the acid hormone of the GI tract, then secretin is pretty much the antacid hormone. But for some reason that nobody can quite figure out, gastronomas reliably increase their gastrin output when hit with a large bolus of secretin. Maybe figuring out why will be your famous discovery someday. You can treat the symptoms of acid hypersecretion with proton pump inhibitors and, of course, octreotide, but since gastronomas do have malignant potential, you'll probably want to surgerize them eventually.